There are a whole bunch of symptoms that are associated with menopause that everyone knows about. Hot flashes, they'll talk to the doctors about that, they'll talk about sleep issues, but there's one hidden really dangerous thing that women have to pay a lot of attention to, and that's their bone health. Yes, very important at this time. It's really important for it to be monitored. Bone health is extremely important. And if you need to, um, there are bioidentical natural hormone therapies that can be utilized to help with bone health, but that is actually just scratching the surface. You know, you want to look at this thing from really the least invasive methods first, and that's diet and exercise. From a diet perspective, when it comes to strong bones, you're looking at those large amounts of dark leafy greens, good essential fats are extremely important as well. Decreasing your amount of uh, sugar, caffeine and alcohol, by all means, if you're smoke, smoking, please stop, that's now why, important. Let me just stop you though, because I understood like dark leafy greens, that's calcium, I got yeah. that. But what about, where does sugar and alcohol come in from the point of view of yeah, harming leaching, bones? Yeah, leaching those, those vitamins and minerals that are so important because bone is a living tissue. Um, you know, and a lot of times, and it's made up of, of vanadium and chromium, all these trace minerals. And a lot of times, you know, it's not just about calcium. It's it's sort of like <clears throat> it's a matrix deficiency. Calcium doesn't have anything to hold on to uh, because of our compromised uh, soil at times, our compromised food chain, our compromised choices. We're not getting these trace minerals, and so those are very important. So you think about also other cofactors like vitamin K2 and vitamin D that are extremely important. Not just calcium, not just magnesium, the trace minerals as well and vitamin K, vi vitamin D, very, very important. And I always test for vitamin D because it is the number one um, uh, deficient vitamin that we have. And it's actually a hormone, whole nother topic there. Um, but it's really important good. and not that it's just within normal limits. I really encourage women to understand that it needs to be optimized between about 60 and 80. That's so important. Should women, once they hit menopause, start supplementing D? Besides the fact that so many people are D deficient and probably should supplement anyway. Yes. But should menopausal women in particular start thinking about supplements. I would say if in doubt, check it out. Just get, it's a simple blood draw. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's really important to understand your levels and you want to recover to an optimal level, not just one click above rickets, which I see all the time. All right, so we have quality nutrition, some vitamin D. Let's talk about also, I think you didn't mention, do soft drinks leach out of bones? What are other leachers? Yeah, so soft drinks definitely avoid. and Even thing, seltzer? Well, not so much. Right. Um, not so much, I, I wouldn't say that. Right. Um, but what I do want to talk about is exercise. And I, as, as far as exercise being so important for bone health, kind of like with your muscles, right? You go to the gym, you push against resistance, it breaks it down and it builds back up stronger, right? Same thing happens with your skeleton. If it feels resistance against it, so weight bearing exercise, mm -hmm. it wants to build back up stronger. That's our body's natural ability to sort of, you know, sort of meet that uh, resistance. And that's so important to have weight bearing exercise, extremely infor important for bone health. My number one recommendation for sure. And how often should they do that? at least three to four times a week. And how long? Because we're all way too busy. Right, well you can get a good session in and this is where, mm -hmm. you know, hiring somebody that knows what they're doing just for you to get proper body mechanics down from a functional fitness perspective for one or two times where you know what it feels like, where you can lock those movement patterns in. But you can do it very efficiently from seven to 20 minutes. Interesting, all right, so at what stage or should everybody get a bone density screening at some point? Really, around uh, around 50 years old, around menopause, you definitely want to, average age of menopause is around 51, so you want to get a bone density and understand where you're at. And if your doctor hasn't suggested it, should you ask them about Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Advocate for yourself. You are your, you know, I always ask people, hey, do you have a primary care provider? I think we should, all should be primarily in charge of providing care for ourselves, and so that's one, one great point. All right, and I think, you know, basically, Again, we can't see it. Bone, bone weakening is a silent symptom. It is. So we really do have to assume that we're weakening because of the hormone state that we're in. Right, and just, be, I mean, it's just, it's prevention is the cure. It's one of those things where it's non-invasive, we can at least know, and then take action from there. All right, great advice, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, do me a favor and share it. Do all those social things, put it on Facebook, tell your friends about it because we want the world to know about all of our great information. Come to our website if you want to learn more about Holly and read her blog at bottomlineinc.com.